Welcome back and thank you for staying with us on KTV Prime Time News. And if you're just joining us, you're streaming live this broadcast on our social media platforms on Facebook, KTV Kenya, and Twitter, KTV Anaska Kenya. It's also live on YouTube at KTV Kenya Live. You can tell us what you're thinking about the bulletin um, on the comment section. And of course, uh, any thoughts, any questions you shall be having for my guests on this discuss, you can be telling me um, on the comment section. I'll be able to read them out as we explore um, the answers. Now, it is an election that Kenyans really waited for to elect uh, to office leaders who they strongly believe will serve them diligently. The 2022 general election was termed as largely peaceful and transparent by the observers who are drawn from within and abroad. Cracks have, however, started developing, tainting the image of the poll as four commissioners of the electoral body disown the results. Citing regularities, the top rival in the presidential contest, Raila Denga, has refused or to concede defeat, calling on the courts to nullify Dr. William Bruto's win. What remains to be the fate of Kenyans moving forward? And joining me for the discussion is Killian, Killian Amolo, a lecturer, researcher, and consultant. Thank you so much, Amolo, for dedicating your time for this discussion. Thank you and welcome. All right, and now it's seven days after the general elections. And of course, uh, yesterday, uh, being uh, six days after the elections, we got to have our presidential elect, that is uh, Dr. William Samuel Ruta. And of course, um, when this announcement was made, when this declaration was made by the chairman of the electoral body, IBC, we witnessed celebrations from parts of the countries and of course uh, for um, other strongholds that we could probably consider as the Rilo Dinga strongholds. This message did not sit well with them. We saw protests literally people protesting these uh, results and he came out clearly today um this is saying that um, he's not convicted with uh, these results but election observers uh, from uh, the country and beyond term this election as a uh, free, fair, and credible, but uh, the end of it, we are seeing what uh, emanating. What now generally would you make of uh, this whole process, the way it started, the way um, the way it ended, and uh, right, probably how things are right now? Yes, I would, I would begin by saying that the entire electoral process was shrouded in a lot of mystery, and I'm actually glad that you're using the word process. Uh, there was a lot of mystery even before the, uh, the, the, the four commissioners disowned the results. Uh, my understanding of a process is that a process is supposed to have inputs, a process is supposed to have transformations, mm -hmm. and a process is supposed to have outputs. But what we are being given here are outputs, and uh, the transformations that led to these outputs are opaque. Mm -hmm. So how do we own up to this? What is the credibility of this output? Mm -hmm. If, uh, for example, the inputs are the forms that were keyed into the system, right. the verifications and everything else that was done, mm -hmm. nobody knows who was doing them mm -hmm. and how they were do being done. Mm -hmm. So that is what is now putting uh, into disrepute the entire process. Mm -hmm. And that is why you see the process and the results being disowned. Mm -hmm. Because we've come far as a democracy. Absolutely. We have matured as a democracy. Mm -hmm. And we still have a long way to go. And that is why you see that uh, uh, people, the country is very quiet and watching at what is going to happen mm -hmm. next. Right. But unfortunately, there are a few merchants of impunity in this country who want to drag us the behind. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be so good for one person to win legitimately in a system that is transparent, right. verifiable, and acceptable by everybody across the board. Mm -hmm. So that is where the problem is. Right, mm. uh, because actually, um, maybe taking from the sentiments of uh, Rilo Dinga, right at the KICC when uh, he was making the announcement uh, that uh, the election results that were declared by the uh, IBC chairman of Lashi Bukhari to be null and void, he's saying that uh, we have come so far as a country in terms of uh, democracy and uh, Lashi Bukhari was dragging uh, this country behind. but. Looking at the discussion, looking at uh, the declaration moment when uh, Mufala Shabukati was uh, making this announcement, he's saying that, uh, I mean, even the president-elect, the deputy president, really congratulated him, saying that um, he stood for the right thing. But other commissioners have disowned these results. 
So what do we make of this? Do we really say that, uh, you know, um, it is termed as corruption, it is termed as, I mean, it is something is tainted when it's not favoring your word? Uh, the first thing before Ichebukati even declared the results, he began by, 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 by praising himself. Mm -hmm. He began by saying that this is the most uh, uh, free and fair election. They are setting standards for the next electoral process that is going to be there in the whole country. Mm -hmm. I think that, that was a bit suspect. Uh, some other independent bodies somewhere mm -hmm. would have been the ones uh, crediting the entire process, right. but not him. Mm -hmm. He was just trying to justify something. Right. Uh, number two, uh, we've heard people talking about percentages. And uh, just, to, just to use an analogy, mm -hmm. suppose we have a mango here. Right. And you want to divide this mango between the two of us. Mm -hmm. uh, you will have your portion, I will have mine before we begin eating the mango. Yes. Suppose we decide not to eat the mango mm -hmm. and we put it together again. It must bring back the whole mango. Absolutely. And not the mango and some other pieces of mango elsewhere. Right. If there are some other pieces of mango, however small they are, mm -hmm. it means they have been plucked from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And plucked either and, and stuffed either in my portion mm -hmm. or into your portion. Right. That is why the whole is now bigger mm -hmm. than the way it was initially. Mm -hmm. So that is why this, this, this aspect of, 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 of the percentage being more than 100 mm -hmm. should not be ignored. Mm -hmm. And you cannot say that it is a rounding off. Uh, era mm -hmm. uh, because it's very significant right yeah all right now uh, probably on that you know um Chebukati also came out clearly that uh, in as much as yes they tried as the electoral body um there were challenges that were being faced and uh, this could not miss in this process could probably what he cited as the challenges um uh you know uh, probably be fit to justify what we are seeing as the discrepancies that are emanating um right now concerning uh, this election uh even if there were challenges in every system mm -hmm. challenges are always anticipated and if you anticipate these challenges, you have to prepare, you have to be proactive. Right. You you lay down strategies of dealing with these challenges before the, when and as they arise. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it would be right to say that uh, the results went this way mm -hmm. because of these challenges, because these challenges are supposed to apply affect everyone across the board, mm -hmm. not to not to not to benefit a particular side of the political divide. Mm -hmm. So if there are challenges, that is that is something that is supposed to to affect. The, the, the whole process right. and, and, and the, all the candidates who are involved in the process, mm -hmm. not just one candidate. And I like it, uh, the way you put it out, uh, that, uh, you know, this, electro, this election was a process and uh, this process, it has to have uh, inputs. And uh, probably uh, if we are to go by that, uh, you know, the inputs, of course, in this process, we would say uh, were the Form 34As, which uh, uh, Bukati claimed that uh, yeah. they were in the public portal. Don't you think probably because of the human nature, you know, a man is probably to error, if we could uh, use that for now, a man is to error. Don't you think there was a possibility that, uh, you know, the people who are inputting the, the polling clerks and uh, the polling, uh, uh, the presiding officers might have inputted, uh, you know, uh, might have given inputs of, uh, you know, misfigures that uh, could have led to um, this percentage going beyond 100? Absolutely. Uh, and I and and I, I I wouldn't want to say that it was uh, it was human error. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be human error, and at times it might also be human error. Right. In quotes, mm -hmm. because we've we, we've even had the com the four commissioners giving a comprehensive statement today. Right. We saw them saying that the results were released before about twenty or so constituencies' results were very verified. Mm -hmm. So just to to work on a modest figure. Assume that each constituency has got 20,000 registered voters right. uh, who are supposed to be voting in a particular, uh, in this uh, uh, election. Mm -hmm. uh, 20,000 times 20, that is 400,000 votes. Imagine 400,000 votes, for example, not being verified. Mm -hmm. See, that is very significant. Absolutely. And it could have, could have swayed the outcome either, either way. Right. So that is why we are not saying that it was human error. Mm -hmm. What was the rush? in releasing the results before these 20 or so consequences were verified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is my opinion, looks very suspect. All right, yeah. and now um, as uh, 
the top contender in uh, this election uh, who of course uh, said that uh, there is results uh, you know being that they are not verifiable um, they should be null and void that is uh, the deputy president's win what is the likelihood of him pursuing because he said that they are going to uh, pursue all the constitutional and legal options to ensure that justice is delivered from your perspective do you see there is a likelihood of uh, this presidency being overturned like it happened in uh, 2017 and um, reading from the moods of people because i mean you, you could probably just interact with people they're saying that uh, we, need, we need to move on we need work to be done we are left we i mean we are behind in terms of a uh, progression because uh, of the covid 19 pandemic and uh, of the tough times that of course we've had people really need to you know soldier on and work their way forward was the likelihood of uh, this election being overturned and probably ha uh, having a rerun or uh, what do you see it generally yes we, we we are supposed to be moving on we are supposed to be going back to our respective businesses our economy needs to begin kicking uh, we need to have political stability right but that notwithstanding uh are we supposed to be moving on and uh, encourage impunity are we supposed to be moving on and leave so many issues uh, that are supposed to be addressed not being addressed? Uh, because if someone has won legitimately, mm -hmm. they should not be worried if it is being challenged in a court of law. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to say that uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I've gone through the, uh, the, 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 the uh, IBC Act, mm -hmm. and I saw that uh, the commissioners are supposed to have uh, a consensus in as far as the results are concerned. And in the event that there is no consensus, there's supposed to be uh, a majority. Mm -hmm. Was that the case? We, we all saw what happened. So that is why this thing can be challenged, and it can be challenged successfully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, um, because uh, you know, what we've seen actually is yeah. a protest uh, from the Raila Odinga strongholds. And until when he was making uh, this uh, press statement today, he was urging uh, his supporters to be calm. I mean, I don't know what are we looking at it. Uh, is there a possibility that uh, really something will come out that, uh, you know, uh, will convict, uh, uh, you know, the, the supporters really that uh, now we have gotten uh, what we deserved? Well, knowing Raila Odinga as a politician, mm -hmm. he has always worked in the interest of this country. Right from the 207 bungled elections, mm -hmm. he has always done things in the interest of this country. And he alluded to that on Sunday when he was addressing the press, even before the results were released. Mm -hmm. He said that whatever is going to happen, the interest of this country must remain paramount. Right. So it is on that strength and perspective that he was talking to his um, uh, to the press today mm -hmm. uh, and because of that there is going to be calm at the end of the day mm -hmm. I don't think he can do anything that will uh, will make this country to disintegrate right yeah because he has put uh, himself is so selfless by the way mm -hmm. yeah all right mm -hmm. and uh, maybe uh, away from that let us uh, um, in as much as these people really need to move forward if all the options are explored are uh, explored and uh, what we are remaining with is uh, moving forward with the presidential elect that was being was declared by the uh, IBC chairman, Correct. that is uh, the deputy president, and uh, um, Dr. Uh, and Rigadi Gashagwa. Mm -hmm. And we saw, um, as people were uh, campaigning, in fact, before uh, naming of uh, the running mates, the women factor really played an important role. Correct. But we are seeing this time round uh, who is being declared as the uh, presidential elect is a, is, a, is a president with a deputy who is male. What, fit, what future are we really looking at in terms of women in politics? In as much as yes, in Nakuru County and uh, other elective uh, positions, we've seen really women emerging top, of course, uh, contesting heavily with uh, male counterparts and winning uh, these elections. Will contenders of the top seat really consider women being uh, their running mates moving forward? Uh, that is supposed to be the direction we are going. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, there are some uh, legal loopholes. Uh, unless this thing is entrenched in law, 
and 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 we say that going forward uh, if a political outfit mm -hmm. that not submit a particular number of women as candidates we are not going to we are we are not going to accept them to participate in the electoral process mm -hmm. going forward we should have something like that mm -hmm. and that will encourage uh, women in politics mm -hmm. otherwise we know that how politics is very dirty mm -hmm. and it actually uh, favors men who are masculine in nature right. yeah that is why we find that uh, with an exception of nakuru and a few other places mm -hmm. most of the other uh, the rest of the country we have males mm -hmm. who have dominated and yeah. probably uh, mm -hmm. being that uh, you are a researcher of course uh, i don't know whether you've uh, done your research concerning uh, these uh, politics do you think women in terms of uh, supporting other women it played a role in uh, this election. Women supporting other women yes. probably played a role. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, women like identifying with each other. They like supporting one another. Uh, just to give you an example, before, because I like following the po political happenings, mm -hmm. before, for example, Gladys Wanga was given the nomination for Homa Bay County, mm -hmm. I saw so many women going to a rally in Homa Bay mm -hmm. and standing together with her mm -hmm. and appealing to the top uh, as a new hierarchy to consider giving that seat to Gladys Wanga. Mm -hmm. And even before the Honorable um, Martha Karua was, was appointed to be the running mate, I saw so many Azimio women right. lobbying and actually trying to say that this is the right person for the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the women will always support and identify with each other. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's impressive, of course, uh, meaning, uh, of course, looking at uh, the Kenyan politics, women have a bright future in terms of uh, these uh, Kenyan uh, politics. Now, um, still assuming that uh, we move forward uh, with the uh, deputy president because uh, in his speech uh, he really affirmed um, he wasn't like probably shaken with uh, the happenings uh, that were there at uh, the bombers of kenya but we saw of course uh, conflict emerging where we saw senator um, ledamo lekina uh, the chief campaigner um, of uh, Azimio camp and uh, other other members of Azimio, of course, causing fracas at uh, that moment. Of course, probably this tainted our image internationally because we had um, diplomats Correct. and uh, other international ob observers. Um, what image generally does uh, this paint of uh, Kenyans uh, in, with elections? Well, it does not paint a good image because uh, the, it, it, it's like become like a cycle every other five years, especially more pronounced in 2007, 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, we have cases of people even leaving this country. We've had cases of international or multinational businesses relocating to other countries right. because of a hostile trading environment in Kenya here. So I'm foreseeing a situation in which going forward, mm -hmm. If uh, the president-elect is to continue in office, I'm foreseeing a situation in which he has to work and convince the international community mm -hmm. that is going to bring, number one, political stability. That is the first thing that he must bring. Mm -hmm. Because political stability will enhance economic growth. Political stability will, 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 will bring business confidence right. and even attract uh, foreign investment. Mm -hmm. So that is the first thing that I expect of him. The second thing that I expect of him is to tackle graft mm -hmm. or corruption. We have been told here and again that we lose 2 billion Kenyan shillings per day. Daily. I was working on these figures cumulatively. Mm -hmm. That translates into 730 billion Kenyan shillings annually mm -hmm. and 3.65 trillion over a presidential term, that is five, five years, years, which is almost the size of our economy, our annual GDP. Mm -hmm. So if we are going five years forward mm -hmm. and coming back one year because of corruption mm -hmm. in, in in a 10 years time we are going to go back how many years look at it that way right you get that mm -hmm. two years right in a hundred year period we will go back 20 years so if graft is not tackled uh, i'm telling you we will still be like lagging behind mm -hmm. uh, the, the way we, we would have gone in a normal way right and to add to that uh, uh, this graft, if it can be tackled, it means that our taxes can easily come down. Sure. Because we need to, don't have to have these high levels of taxes if this amount is not going to, uh, to the government, if it is not going to the projects for which they are intended. Mm -hmm. We can lower our taxes, we can lower our levies, 
we can make our business environment more attractive for investments mm -hmm. and attract foreign investors who are going elsewhere just by tackling graft. graft. And tackling graft also after the president-elect has done that, I expect him to work on the cost of living. Mm -hmm. Because almost everyone is crying everywhere. Most families cannot fend for themselves. Right. The president needs to tackle the high cost of living. Mm -hmm. Bring it down. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, impressive. Uh, you know, uh, the deputy president, of course, in his uh, speech, I'm still delving much on his uh, speech because he was saying that um, the 2022 general elections, it was a, a different election. Uh, looking at uh, uh, the, the pattern of Kenyans voting, he said that uh, Kenyans leaned on uh, the manifestos and agendas when it comes uh, to this election. Moving forward, of course, uh, probably as we shall be facing other elections, do you see Kenyans have come of age? Or rather, they will outgrow the aspect of ethnicity, which I don't really believe that uh, played a role in uh, this uh, year's election. Yeah, the aspect of the ethnicity... Uh will come to an end, I'm foreseeing that, mm -hmm. because right now we are coexisting, despite what has happened. Mm -hmm. You see there is relative calm across the board. In the past elections, we witnessed cases whereby when a winner is declared, even before the other person concedes or makes a statement, mm -hmm. it's like being blown a whistle to begin fighting. Right. That's what has happened in the past. But this time around, things have happened differently. Mm -hmm. That means that as a, a country, we are maturing. Mm -hmm. That means the level of ethnicity mm -hmm. is also going down. And uh, mm -hmm. maybe the last uh, thing that I would, rather, uh, I would borrow from uh, uh, Dr. Ruto's statement is uh, he has practically proven that uh, Inawezekana, in as much as yes, Inawezekana was, uh, was a brand for the Azimio camp, sure. that mm -hmm. um, you know, someone, a child who's nobody's son, mm -hmm can clinch the presidential post. Correct. Would you probably just maybe reason on this thought, reason with him on the same line of thought that uh, you don't have to be a dynasty to occupy the presidential seat. You don't have uh, to be um, a, a state project to own the presidential seat. And of course it also um, uh, challenges the status quo that uh, you try once, you try the second time, you try the third time, and uh, there are hopes, of course, probably of winning the fourth or the fifth time, uh, taking the example of Rilo Dinga. What do you make of this whole ordeal? Yes, we've had, uh, I, I can say that you don't have to be a dynasty, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you, if you are someone who is a firm believer in the word of God. Mm -hmm. We've seen cases of people rising from nowhere to somewhere. Right. David, for example, mm -hmm. who was the king to succeed Saul, uh, David was, was, was a nobody. Nobody knew him until the time he was anointed. Mm -hmm. He was just a small boy somewhere in the field herding animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that means that each one of us, uh, if, you remain, if you have a vision, a personal vision, you have a focus for it, and you want to pursue it, no matter all the odds, you can still achieve it. Right. No matter all the, the circumstances that are against you, mm -hmm. you can still achieve it. Mm -hmm. Of course, assuming that the entire process has been done legitimately. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, there is no there is no opaque oh, aspect correct. of it, of course, correct. coming uh, to the tail of uh, the whole process. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. My mm -hmm. director is uh, telling me that we are running out of time and uh, probably he would want us uh, to give a closing remarks on this. I would just appeal to Kenyans to be more peaceful, observe peace, mm -hmm. coexist with one another. After all, we are brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Elections will come and go, we will still remain. Right. Our businesses will still remain. Our struggles will still remain. So let us just observe peace. Right. Let us stay calm and wait for the process to, con to, to, to be concluded. All right. And that's it uh, from um, our researcher consultant, um, Mr. Amolo Killian. Let us embrace each other. Elections will come, always come and go, but we shall remain. The country shall remain.